This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com and today I want to talk about gathering engine data from your OBD2 port. That's the port that's down near your knee on almost every car since 1996. Basically what I'm using is what's known as an ELM327. These things are available all over eBay and Amazon for about 20 bucks. They do vary in quality to some degree. This is the one I'm using. I don't know how to tell you exactly which ones do work and which ones don't, but this one appears to be fine. The software I use is available in the Android world. As far as I know, there's none that work real well in the Apple world, but this is known as Torque. It's a $5 program, works beautifully. It can clear codes on any ODB car and it does have real-time data information so you can do like dashes that sort of thing and it does have data logging here's what the dash looks like it is customizable I'm not really going to show you a whole lot about the software but I do like it for five bucks it's amazing by the way I do run it on an Android I happen to have a Samsung Tab A that I got at the um, a pawn shop I bought mine for about $75 it is cell phone capable so you can use it for all sorts of other things later you can use it as a dash in the mega sport world basically when you get into this thing at the top you can select what to log that's basically the PIDs in the OEM world it's the fields that you want to data log I do typically uh, either synchronous logging which tries to get all the data packets to match or if you go down to file logging interval you can set that interval up to about uh, five times a second I do log any time that uh, the software is running and connected to the ODB port and here is the series of PIDs that I am logging you can go down through them what you'll have to do is go down through the ones that are available on the car that you're logging and then when you get into the uh, Android file system, you'll see torque logs and it will create a log. You can get these to add together. It turns up at the data rates we're playing with. You'll probably have to log a car for, oh, maybe 20 drives. Maybe a couple of weeks going to work will give you plenty of data. The data rates are pretty slow, but as long as you get lots of data, it's not a problem. So let me show you some of the things that you can find. This is a, a Honda Ridgeline, actually. But it is a variable valve timing motor. On the left, you can see the RPM versus engine load. Engine load is basically manifold air pressure in the OEM world. And you can see down here, in a downshift, the motor literally is going. I'm plotting RPM, engine load, and AFR measured. This motor does have a wide band. And you can see where I'm going about 20 to 1 AFR on a downshift, 14.7 or storage, pretty much everywhere, except when I'm hard in the throttle up here on the top right. If you look at one of my earlier videos, you'll see one about map times RPM. This is the same plot, but taken off of the factory Honda motor. And you can see down at the bottom at very low loads, there is that lean area in red. By the way, the colors on both sides are the same, AFR, and the same scale. But notice you get a straight line, like I was talking about in the other video, but you also get a second line that develops. And notice that the AFR is different on the two lines. What that is, is right here at about that dot, is where Honda elects to sometimes turn on variable valve timing, and you get a different volumetric efficiency, which is why you get a more steep line. The motor is simply asking for more fuel. So now, if we go to, in Megalog Viewer HD, the histogram table generator, I set the brake points to something that looks reasonable, and what you can see is out in the middle, I've got the long-term or short-term fuel trims. This one happens to be long-term fuel trims. And you can see when the mass airflow is 75, I'm running about 2.5%. You can see at the limits, sometimes it's not real consistent, but if you were tuning this motor to tune the mass airflow, you would probably, in the 13 range on the MAF, you'd want to add about 2 to maybe 3% fuel. 
But if you notice around the perimeters, these things tend to be a little inconsistent based on the RPM you're turning. But this would be a very easy way to look at data coming off of almost any system and figure out how you need to adjust it. This is recreating the AFR target table. Same thing at the top left. You can see where I've chosen RPM to be the horizontal, engine load to be the vertical axis, and out in the middle, I've got the AFR ratio measured. Notice how this motor targets 14.7 almost everywhere except in the top right corner. Now what I've done is turned on tracing and you can see just where you spend most of your time with this motor. If you're chasing AFR, right there is where you'd want to run as lean as possible. You spend so little time up in this area that you might as well just make the motor run like it wants to at whatever AFR makes it happy. Now what I've done is the same basic data, but in the field I've chosen timing advance. And lo and behold, we've just created the timing table for this motor. All we're looking at is the ODB port. But if you're going to later put a standalone on this motor, it'd be a great place to start. This is data that happens to be off of a Ford Coyote motor. It isn't a Mustang, it is a race motor on a road race track. This data is taken with a software package called SCT that has the ability to high speed data log off of the ODB port. You can see I've regenerated in this case, the Spark Advance table. And you can see where this motor has its basic operating range on track. Again, manifold air pressure is on the left side and running horizontally is RPM. Here's a view you may have never noticed before. Basically what I've done is made the mass airflow on the bottom. On the left side, I've chosen Spark Advance. And notice how Spark Advance gets fairly high at low mass airflows. And then as you come up on the power band, the timing comes down. Right about here along this line is 30 degrees. Also notice I happen to have in color the throttle position and how this particular tuner has elected to pull timing at full throttle where at the same flow at less throttle position, he runs more timing. And then you can see where it settles into about 28, 29 degrees at wide open throttle. And again, I've basically done the same thing on this motor where I've got RPM along the horizontal axis. On the left is the intake manifold pressure, basically manifold air pressure, the boost. And this happens to be a twin turbo Ford uh, pickup truck. I would like to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com. These are the guys that develop Mega Log Viewer HD. I use to validate almost all tunes. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.